Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghafoor. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the Director General of State Corporation of Space Activities of Russia, Dmitry Rogozin, who is currently visiting the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed Rogozin and hailed the depth of historic close relations between the two friendly countries, affirming the kingdom's keenness to bolster cooperation with Russia, especially in the field of peaceful space research and benefit from Russia's advanced experiences in space science to achieve common interests. In this regard, His Majesty the King noted the achievements of Bahrain's National Space Science Agency and its efforts in developing national capabilities to serve the kingdom and enhance its status in the field of space science, hailing the advanced level of coordination in the field of training and signing mutual cooperation agreements, which will culminate in sending the first Bahraini astronaut to the Russian space station in a joint trip with Russia astronauts. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the role of Russian President Vladimir Putin in reinforcing and developing bilateral ties, noting Russia's successes in all fields, especially in space fields, wishing Russia and its people further success, progress and prosperity. For his part, Rogozin expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome he received and for His Majesty's efforts in supporting and encouraging cooperation with Russia in various fields, particularly in the space sector. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today in the presence of the Commander of Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa at Safriya Palace, the Commander of the United States Central Command CENTCOM, General Joseph Votel. His Majesty the King welcomed the guest expressing the Kingdom's pride in the historic relations and partnership with the United States, which is based on decades of trust, mutual respect and coordination for the interests of the two countries. His Majesty hailed the continuous advancement of bilateral relations in all fields in light of the mutual keenness on bolstering them, especially in military coordination and defense cooperation. His Majesty noted the importance of the U.S. role in establishing the pillars of security, stability and regional and international peace, expressing appreciation for the efforts of the Commander of the United States Central Command in bolstering Bahrain-U.S. cooperation in military and defense fields and his keenness on developing joint cooperation wishing him success. For his part, the commander of the United States Central Command expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for meeting with him and his accompanying delegation for His Majesty's efforts to strengthen joint cooperation and for His Majesty's continuous support to the historic cooperation. General Joseph Votel expressed a pride in the bilateral relations and the Kingdom's support and contribution to maintaining security and stability in the region. He also congratulated His Majesty the King on the success of the latest elections, commending the continuous development the Kingdom achieves in various fields and wishing Bahrain further advancement under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met with the Commander of the United States Central Command CENTCOM, General Joseph Votel at Qurabiya Palace. His Royal Highness outlined the strength of relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America, which continue to grow across various fields, particularly in defense and military cooperation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also highlighted the importance of further advancing strategic bilateral 
bilateral collaboration in order to maintain regional security and stability. The meeting provided an opportunity to review a number of regional and international issues of common interest. The Chief of Staff of the Bahrain Defense Force, Lieutenant General Diab Bil Saqar Al Nuaimi, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met with the Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Simon Martin at Qudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the long-standing strategic ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom and the importance of further advancing bilateral collaboration across various sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the British Ambassador also discussed regional and international issues of common interest. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met a delegation from the Middle East Policy Council at Qudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Middle East Policy Council delegation discussed a range of regional and international issues and reviewed the organization's work which focuses on areas of shared strategic interest between the United States and the Middle East. His Royal Highness highlighted that the long-standing partnership between the U.S. and Bahrain has played a central role in upholding regional peace and stability. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also highlighted Bahrain's long-standing efforts in advancing sustainable development under the Comprehensive Development Program of His Majesty the King and stressed that the principles of mutual respect and coexistence continue to drive every aspect of Bahrain's efforts to secure a prosperous and stable future for the citizens and the peoples of the region. The Middle East Policy Council delegation comprises of senior representatives from the Council's Board of Directors, including including the former ambassador of the United States to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ronald Newman, president of the Council and former United States ambassador to the Sultanate of Oman, Richard Schmeyer, and the Council's executive director, Dr. Thomas Matire. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. Under the patronage of the Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, His Highness Lieutenant Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the events of the Bahrain Sports Day began today in all the Royal Guard camps. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the participation of the Royal Guard's affiliates, which reflected their fitness and high level of performance. He also commended dedicating a day for the sports in all all ministries, authorities and government institutions, which reflects the keenness of the leadership of sports, physical and health aspects of citizens and residents. In celebration of the Bahraini Sports Day, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al Nuaimi, opened the new walkway at the Saudi Bahraini Institute for the Blind. He also participated in a march from the Institute's headquarters to the Ministry Building, where he was briefed on many of the pillars dedicated to sports activities, competitions, as well as in a football match involving a number of officials and staff of the Ministry. The Minister commended the Cabinet's decision to dedicate half a working day to ministries and government bodies to encourage adopting a healthy lifestyle. He also commended the support of the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work and youth affairs, chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee for the activities of the Sports Day activities. Al Nuaimi affirmed that the ministry carries out hundreds of activities and sports programs annually for talented students in various sports, noting the ministry's efforts in this field have contributed to making honorable sports achievements in many regional and international events.
The Ministry of Labor and Social Development participated in the activities of Bahrain Sports Day with the participation of officials and employees of the ministry and the staff of its centers in the various governorates in the walking, marathon and sports competitions. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Humaydan, hailed the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, of dedicating February 12 as a half-working day for sports activities to celebrate the national Sports Day. He affirmed that the directives contribute to promoting practicing sports in the Bahraini community with its various categories. The minister also commended the call of the President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to dedicate a National Sports Day, praising His Highness's vital role in supporting the youth and sports sector, which was reflected positively on Bahraini teams and clubs that made important achievements in various sports sectors. The Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs organized the Sports Day event under the patronage and presence of the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Abdul Hussain bin Ali Mirza, and the Chief Executive Officer of the Electricity and Water Authority, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Minister hailed the directives of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, which came at the initiative of the representative of His Majesty the King for Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al Khalifa to dedicate half a working day for sports activities. The Ministry of Information Affairs organized its sports day activities at the ministry's headquarters with the participation of the Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi and a number of officials and employees of the ministry. The event included a number of activities such as walking, football, a tug of war and other sporting events which were attended by a group of ministry staff. The minister praised the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to dedicate the 12th of February every year half a working day to sports activity to celebrate Bahraini Sports Day. He stressed that these directives stem from the keenness of His Royal Highness to promote sport in the community, also praising the, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa's initiative to dedicate a national sports day for the kingdom. He also hailed the role of His Highness in supporting the youth and sports sector. Al Rumehi highlighted the ministry's keenness to participate in this national sports event by involving employees from all categories and sports activities, in addition to the role of the ministry in broadcasting the various sports events that took place in the kingdom. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism organized a sports day filled with many sports programs and competitions specially prepared for Bahraini Sports Day. In accordance with the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, which aims to promote health practices and increase physical activity. The Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Kingdom organized various sporting events on the occasion of the 2019 Bahraini Sports Day for embassy staff, students and residents in London. On this occasion, the embassy prepared a full program that includes a number of sports activities such as tennis, football, badminton, running and many other exercises. The Representatives Council held its weekly meeting today, chaired by its speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal. The council approved decree of Law 51 of 2018, amending a number of provisions of the trade law. The council also approved the recommendation of the Public Facilities and Environment Committee on a draft law replacing Article 7 of decree by Law 20 of 2002 on regulating fishing and protecting marine life. The Representatives Council approved referring a draft resolution on preventing foreign vendors from roaming in road intersections, places of worship and public roads to the specialized committee. The council approved referring a draft resolution to the government allowing the employees listed for voluntary retirement to pull out. 
The council also approved a draft resolution on preserving the reward for employees and Quran memorization centers. The council bureau authorities preparation of a statement on the 18th anniversary of voting for the National Action Charter was also approved. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi, had participated in the Future of Government Communication Forum as part of the World Government Summit held in Dubai under the patronage of UEE Vice President, Prime Minister, and Dubai ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The minister stressed that media government institutions do not seek to restrict freedom of speech as something, but work to protect it. Al Rumehi affirmed that in light of the spread of social media and the massive flow of information some have taken advantage of these developments to serve their corrupt agendas. He also stressed the necessity uh, to organize this vital sector and protect it from these dangers. The minister affirmed that any legislation or organization is the means of defense to protect Arab societies. Under Secretary of the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments for Islamic Affairs, Dr. Farid Yaqub Al Muftah, stated that what has been discussed about reducing the budget of Quran memorization centers is inaccurate. The ministry has sponsored these centers, established regulations for them, awarded all teachers and supervisors, organized local Quran competitions, rewarded winners, arranged the kingdom's participation in international Quran competitions as well as rewarded the winners with a budget of about 2 million Bahraini dinars annually. He stressed that the budget for the current year is continuing as it is to support the centers supervised by the ministry and granting bonuses to the owners and did not affect any change. The operational budgets of the ministry departments are limited to planned reductions according to budget estimates of the current year. He also noted that the interest of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Holy Quran is a source of pride, highlighting that citizens hold top ranks in many international competitions. Through voting for the National Action Charter by a sweeping majority of 98.4%, the people of Bahrain affirmed their support to rally behind the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa towards modernization, reform, and development. Shura Council member Dr. Muhammad Ali Hassan Ali described the anniversary as a cherished annual national occasion to renew adherence between the leadership and people. I think the National Action Charter is a very important document that Bahrain has adopted uh, 18 years ago. It is the foundation elements, it laid the foundation elements of the public participation through the uh, creation of the uh, legislative authorities through the, through the Shura Council and the Nawab Council and of course the municipal councils. And this is very important steps that Bahrain has laid down toward the uh, widespread of uh, public participation. The Shura Council uh, has a remarkable role in the democratic process through its participation in, in the legislative uh, f forms in uh, uh, tackling very important issues and of course in cooperation with the Nawab Council. Both of them work uh, systematically to create or to, to form very important legislation in all disciplines, if it is economic, social, health or whatever. The National Action Charter is a political document issued in December 2000 comprising general principles and basic concepts in an aim to determine the current and future courses of action. Representatives Council Member Isa Abdul Jabbar Mahmoud Al Kohiji says since the adoption of the Charter of Bahrain, has Bahrain has witnessed massive social and political reforms. 
After the adoption of the National Action Charter, we went into a new era. The cornerstone of our democracy was the National Action Charter. Since then, we've had social reforms, political reforms, and that is the new era for Bahrain since 2001. We had our first election in 2002, and that was the first step of having the public be a part of the decision-making in Bahrain. Since then, we are in our fifth term at the moment right now in Parliament, and we are step-by-step step going towards a better future for Bahrain. 2018 elections had a record high participation, which that shows that people are more aware of the democratic processes in Bahrain, and slowly, slowly, the awareness is getting a lot more down to the grassroots of Bahrain. So that is very positive for Bahrain and its future. As a representative of the people, uh, we make sure that all the laws that we pass over here has a true sense of what the people need and how are they going to fare with it in the future. So that is one of the main objectives of the council.